מצוס עשה, לדובק בחכום תלמידיהם, כדי ללמוד מעשיהם. It's very interesting. I give you a credo in life. I give you an understanding, a perspective. I tell you the human being is the most impressionable creature that walks the face of the earth. And if you're exposed to good people, good values, correct perspectives, it'll make a difference in your life. And if you're exposed to the negative, you become that negative person because of the environment, the influences and the perspectives. Okay, we say it's up to you. If you take good advice, you know where to go. You don't listen, you become, you, you victimize yourself. You know, but God says, you know something, you raise a child. The child doesn't want to go to sleep, doesn't want to do his homework. So what does the parent do? The parent has to actually rein in on the child. He has to discipline the child. We do have a right to impose your will on your child. The child should do whatever he wants. The answer is because the child himself doesn't have the ability to understand the value of right and wrong is the parent bring the child into existence, has to raise the child to assume certain positive behavior patterns and perspectives. So when he becomes the adult, he'll behave that way and he'll have an appreciate for that kind of value and that type of behavior. Now it's up to him. Do you want to continue or not as an adult? Now you have free choice. Otherwise, the inclination is you're locked in into a negative behavior pattern. Because if you're not mentored as a child with proper values and behavior, it's almost pushing a boulder up a mountain. That's the reality of life. So God says, I give you a perspective, which we just said. God says, you know something? You're obligated to associate yourself with chachomim, with wise people, with tzaddikim, and being in a positive environment. God is the father reigning in on the child. This is what you have to, you have no choice. You want to be, defy your parent? The child can be that defying child. But the parent, if the parent himself presents it in a way where it's the child at his level is able to appreciate it, the child is going to allow himself to be disciplined and to assume positive behavior patterns. That's why Hashem gave us the mitzvah. Because we are so impressionable for the negative and positive, therefore the Rambam says, mitzvah asay li dovi bechachomim v'talmideim. There's a mitzvah to attach yourself to chachomim and the students. Kedei lil mod mimaseim. To be able to learn from their ways. Because that's the reality of a human being. Kin shenema ubo tidbok. Third Sarah says you should cleave to him. How do we cleave to God? To assume that understanding, that behavior pattern, by attaching ourselves to Chachomim and the students. I mean, how could God give us a mitzvah to attach yourself to him? How do you attach yourself to the divine presence? This, the Gemara asked this question, Talmud, Elo, Kachomer Chachomim, Beferush Mitzuzu. This is how the Chachomim elucidated. The meaning of this mitzvah. What it means, how do you attach yourself to God? By having, being associated with the Chachomim and their students. As a result of that, you take on that behavior pattern which God wants you to walk. And through that, you have a relationship with Him. Therefore, what kind of wife should you marry? The daughter of Talmud Chacham, first of all, she was raised by him, so she's the equivalent of the student of the of the Chachamim, because her values are naturally correct. And if her father's still alive, and she has siblings, you're going to be exposed to the siblings. That's the family. The Yisua Bittel Talmud Chacham. You should marry your daughter to a Talmud Chacham. As a result of that, you're going to have that level of association. And even in the most mundane level of existence, eating and drinking, you should eat and drink with Talmud Chachomim. Lasus Prakmacho le Talmud Chachom to offer business opportunities to the Talmud Chachom. 
and to be attached to them, associated with them at every level of association. Meaning, don't miss a point. Whenever you have an opportunity, it's like they say, people, they don't miss a beat. When it comes to this, this is the ultimate, that every level of opportunity, you shouldn't pass, pass on it. Because every juncture has a valuable value because it'll make a difference in what type of person you're going to be. Shenema uldovkabo. That's the mitzvah you should attach yourself to. You should roll in the dust of their feet. You should drink thirstily of their waters. That's the level of association attachment you should have. You know, it's interesting. You know, when I went to study yeshiva out of town in the 60s, what was going on in the 60s? You had all the craziness on college campuses started in the 60s. Yes, you had the SDS. You had all kinds of riots. Everything was going on. Baltimore was a quiet, quaint community tucked away, not exposed to anything. It's like, you know, it's going back in time. Whatever's going in the world had no relevance to there. And if we were in the Shiva, it's even more so. You barely saw a newspaper. The only thing you were exposed to were the walls of the yeshiva, the Torah study, stud, Torah study, the sound of Torah, and hearing only words of Torah. So, you know, today they call that, you know, that's called indoctrination. That's an indoctrination. Person goes to Canyon Ranch, spends 50000 a week. They feed him grass. He only walks on two feet. He doesn't walk on all four, right? And he's not woken up at three in the morning to be milked, right? And he's given a bed, which is has no bounce to it. He goes, you know, and they got a chiropractor work on you every day and a therapist. And you pay that because they want you to be healthy. You know, that sounds like indoctrination. Whoever heard of such a thing? That's called indoctrination. That's like being sent, sent, sent away to who knows where, to the gulag in, in Russia, in Siberia. Except here they have a thermostat on the room. So you don't have to freeze in the winter. You go to, it's not indoctrination. You go to West Point. Years ago, today people don't even know what West Point's about. I'm not sure today what it's about. One time, when you went to West Point, every aspect of your time there, had to be at the most disciplined, perfect, grade-wise, behavior-wise, dress-wise, every-wise, exercise-wise, sports-wise, had to be perfect. Do these people see themselves, they're incarcerated? They're incarcerated for the years they're in West Point. When they graduate at West Point, what do they graduate at? Engineering degree? Finance degree that they were qualified to be the head of the head of corporation with a little more experience. Well, that's indoctrination. No, that's the ultimate level of mentoring to become to maximize on what you're gifted with as an intelligent person. Mitzvah al kol adam levas kol echad v'echad Yisrael kigufa. There's an obligation to every person to love every Jew no less than he loves himself. Shenemar Vavto Recho Kamocha You should love your fellow as you love yourself. This is this being Jews. There's no mitzvah for a non-Jew to love a Jew. But every Jew there's a mitzvah to see that Jew in a positive vein. We're not talking about to delude yourself. You have a Jew who's, who's dishonest, corrupt. There's no mitzvah to love that guy. But if there's a Jew, you know, uh, he's not my cup of tea. I, I'm not interested in him. No, not interested in helping him. Torah says you must love him like, like yourself. Because he is something, he has a certain level of representation. Therefore, 
When you speak of that person, you have to speak in the context of something which is praiseworthy. And if you see that as finances are in jeopardy and you can make a difference to protect them, you, you have an obligation. As you would do for your own, do for his. Just as one is concerned for his own regarding the, the preservation of his own asset, he's interested in his own level of what? Of integrity, of respect. The way you want to be treated, that's the way you should treat your fellow. That's love your fellow as you love yourself. Somebody once explained it with an allegory. You no, know, there's a positive commandment. You're obligated to give your fellow the benefit of the doubt. You see something, person behaving a certain way, and it's a 50 50 call. Maybe did the wrong thing, maybe did the right thing. You have an obligation to give him the benefit of the doubt. If he did the wrong thing, he did the wrong thing. That's not, you're not judging. That's not a judgment. You saw he did the wrong thing. But if it's a question where you, there's a judgment call, always better err to the side that he did nothing wrong. That's, you should judge your fellow with righteousness. Now, so somebody explained with a Moshe, with the allegory. Person sells a house with all its contents. So the moment the person hands over the keys, anything that's found in the house is goes with the house and the original owner has lost it. So what does he do? The moving trucks drive away. He pulls out of the driveway where he lived and he hasn't yet given the keys to the new owner. He's three blocks away. He remembers maybe tucked away in the closet. He had left something there which has great value. What does he do? He drives back, goes to that closet, checks it, nothing there. He's already two miles away from his house. Then he thinks, you know, in the attic, he may have left something there of great value, and he goes back again. And he goes back about six times before he hands over the keys to make sure he didn't leave a stone unturned to make sure he left nothing there. Why? Because if he did, that means he's giving up something which has great value to him. So to the degree that you value something, you're always going to be concerned, maybe it's there. If you love, you value your fellows, you love yourself. If there's any way you could see him in the positive light, you leave no stone unturned to see him in the positive light. As for yourself, you'd want to be seen in the positive light. And you want the person to give you every benefit of doubt. Identically, you should use that same yardstick on someone else. Give that person every benefit of the doubt to see him in a positive light, not in a negative, as you want to be seen yourself. Same idea. Unfortunately, like we mentioned before, we stereotype people. People who are different than ourselves immediately, and even people like ourselves. But if you're not, if that person's not you, immediately. If you can see him with a critical eye, you don't see him with a positive eye. That's the way it is. But that's that's contrary to what the Torah says. You must love your fellow as you love yourself. It doesn't mean emotional love. It means you must value him. Not to speak negatively about him. To be concerned for his financial welfare if, if you can make a difference. If you could advise him. And you withhold that advice that causes him financial loss. You do, wouldn't you want to be advised to prevent the financial loss? So if you can make the difference for that person, you should. 